आइए हम लोग अपने नेक्स्ट सेगमेंट की तरफ मूव करते हैं जो कि है रीडिंग ऑफ द चैप्टर ओपन योर बुक्स टू पेज नंबर ट्वेंटी टू यूनिट थ्री डैडलस एंड ईकरस मैनी हंड्रेड्स ऑफ ईयर गो देर वॉज अ किंग कॉल्ड माइनोस ही वॉज द रूलर ऑफ एन आईलैंड कॉल्ड क्रीट विच लाइज टू द साउथ ऑफ ग्रीस इन यूरोप किंग माइनोस वॉज नॉट ओनली वाइज बट जस्ट He ruled his country with a firm hand but he was fair When the Greeks ventured to Crete they were most impressed with this monarch and came to admire him greatly How wise he is they proclaimed and in time the king Minos himself came to believe this He felt he was not only the wisest king in the world but also the wisest of all men It came to pass that King Minos heard about one of his subjects. The man's name was Daedalus, and indeed he was knowledgeable in diverse ways. He was a builder and a designer. He had invented things which helped people to do their work more efficiently. He had designed a saw with which large trees could be cut, and He had invented a potter's wheel. Potters no longer had to spend hours fashioning their vases and pots by hand, using a spatula to beat and smoothen the sides. With the wheel, they could slap down a lump of clay in the middle, spin the wheel round, and then draw the clay out great gently with their fingers, shaping it into any cylindrical form. Their work could now be done with a greater ease. Sailors blessed Daedalus for teaching them how to rig sails for their vessels. With these new sails, they could travel further and more swiftly to explore all the islands that dotted the blue seas around Crete. This man must truly be skillful and wise, thought King Minos. When he heard about all these inventions, Let us see if he can build me a labyrinth. King Minos sent for Daedalus and asked him to design a labyrinth from which no man could escape. It must be so cleverly designed, charged the king, that only those who know the secret may get out of it. I shall do my best, replied Daedalus humbly and set to work immediately. Daedalus and his young son Icarus spent many months designing and building the labyrinth when it was complete it was truly the greatest maze in the world it contained many rooms both large and small connected by numerous winding passages and turnings opening into one into another the labyrinth covered a vast expanse of land and seemed to have no beginning or end Daedalus has excelled himself but the king was not pleased perhaps it was precisely because Daedalus has been so successful and so clever that the king turned against him Daedalus and Icarus were shut up in a tower at one end of the island and they were and there they stayed looking out to see each day lamenting for their lost freedom There was little means of escape from the tower and certainly no way off the island. The king had posted guards at every turn and every ship traveling to and from the island was watched carefully. King Minos controls the land and the sea, said Daedalus to his son one day. even if we can break out of this prison we shall not be able to escape from the island certainly not by the land or sea father said egris gazing out of the window at the girls swooping over the bay but, but perhaps we can try to do so through the air i wish we had wings like those girls then we could simply fly away Daedalus said nothing in reply but nodding wisely and thinking about what his son had said he came and stood by him at the window to watch the girls later that day Daedalus and Icarus found a way out of the tower 
come with me, my son," said Daedalus. "We have much work to do if we are to be truly free." When they had emerged from their prison cell and had descended the tower, Daedalus set Icarus to work. "We shall make ourselves wings," he said, "and with them we shall leave the island. It is our only solution." "But how are we to make wings?" asked the puzzled boy. "I will show you," replied the father. But first we must collect feathers many feathers the father led the son towards the rock on the seashore the coastal rocks were used by the sea birds for their nesting grounds there were feathers galore all over the shore during the weeks that followed walking amongst the rocks at dusk and after nightfall father and son began to make a collection of the finest feathers they could find By day, out of the view of the watchful eyes of the guards, they begin to weave the feathers together. Daedalus had no tools to work with, save for a needle that he had always wore in his tunic. With this and with threads plucked carefully from an old blanket, he began to sew together the larger feather. To bind the softer, more delicate feather, Daedalus melted and used the wax of old candles. The feathers were built up layer upon layer and shaped to resemble the wings of a giant bird. Very soon, four enormous wings had been fashioned from the feathers. Today we can finally try our, our wings, said Daedalus. One sunny day, look, the sea is calming. The sea is calm and the clouds idle. The breeze is by no means strong. Daedalus took up one great wing in either arm and mounted carefully mounted carefully to the first level of the tower balancing himself on the very edge of the parapet he slipped his arm through the delicate through the delicate straps and loops of the on the wings and clasped them firmly in his grip for a moment he stood on the edge of the balcony and slowly and steadily began to flap his wings then when a soft breeze began to blow aiding his efforts he leapt from the tower daedalus flapped frantically as he fell and then as if borne aloft by the gods he was soaring and gliding like a bird round the tower he went with his young son cheering his progress over the next few days over the next few days father and son practiced taking off and landing very soon they became quite skilled at this and came to understand how a fledgling could learn this so naturally they were soon flying round and round the tower with great ease when the day of their departure and flight to freedom down daedalus cautioned his son egris my son warned he listen with great care to what i have to say for you will live or die by my words you have the wings of a bird but they were not fashioned by the gods they were made by you and me and we are but mortal fly not too low for the mist of the sea will envelop you they will clog your wings and you may well lose your way fly not too high either for we have used wax to bind the feathers of our wings the wax will surely melt if the heat of the sun is too great and who knows what might happen then follow me closely keep near and you will be safe have you understood this is wise i have father replied the boy as he eagerly picked up his wing i shall do exactly as you bade me daedalus assisted the boy in fastening his wings but his fingers trembled with fear a perilous journey lay ahead of them as he took up his own wings he glanced lovingly at the boy his eye filled with tears when he realized that he might never see his son again daedalus made his way to the edge of a parapet ahead of his son he flapped his wings and leapt into the air he rose up and up higher and higher into the blue sky he turned to look as a mother bird would have done to watch her fledging take to the skies Icarus has learned his lesson well.
for he was soon rising gracefully into the air. Daedalus heaved a great sigh of relief as the boy gained height and followed his path. Father and son were soon soaring over the fields of the island. Far down below them, they could see the plowmen and the shepherds stop in their work to gaze and marvel at these strange winged creatures of the air. Behold, it is Apollo, said a shepherd in Ave as they swooped by. Yes, yes, replied his friend excitedly. It is indeed Apollo, and see, he is followed by Cupid. Father and son flew on further and further till they were over the sea. Daedalus chuckled as he winked over the blue waters and watched the ships far blow. King Minos cannot stop us now, my son, he cried in joy and turned to ascertain the position of his son. But Icarus was nowhere to be seen. In the celebration of his freedom and his newfound skill, and with every movement of his wing, the youth was now soaring high above his father, heading dangerously close to the sun. Daedalus circled round and round, casting his eyes blow. Icarus, where are you? he screamed, but there was no response. And then he looked into the sparkling sky above. Icarus, he cried with all his might. Icarus, beware, you fly too high. Remember my words, come down, come down. But the boy did not hear him. He had already gained too much height. And now the wax in his feathered wings began to melt and soften. As Daedalus watched, small plumes began to drop from the wings of Icarus and float in the air. Soon, larger feather fluttered and became detached and floated gently down, down, down. Icarus flapped more vigorously and began to kick his feet in panic. But it was all to no avail. The boy plummeted towards the sea like a dying comet and was enveloped by the blue water's blow. All that remained were some feathers floating on the gentle waves. A Greek myth retold by Nicholas Hosper. I hope you have done this reading kindly. Kindly, you have done this reading in the house. Inshallah, in the next class, you have done this chapter. 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 अपना ख्याल रखिएगा स्टे होम एंड स्टे से अल्लाह हाफिज़